need the perfect flex board design? Well, it's not this. It's this. And today you're going to learn six easy tips on how to make the perfect flexible PCB. So, let's jump right in. So the first tip is to minimize your heat. And as you can see here on the left, those pads are completely melted because we had a way too high heat there. So to prevent this from happening, all you have to do is minimize your heat. Don't go above 250 degrees C when you are doing solder reflow for the surface mount components, and don't go above 300 degrees C for more than 5 seconds when soldering through hole components. And to really minimize it and decrease those chances, I even used low temp solder, like 138 degree melt solder, minimize those chances of overheating the pads. The second tip has to do with strength, and it's to use teardrops. Teardrops are great because they allow you to have these really thick traces and minimize bending. And as you can see, everywhere that we have basically have a trace connection, it's widened the pad to reduce the chances of cracking. Which brings us to our next tip, wider copper pores. This will add a whole lot of strength to your copper pads because as you can see here, this is a huge copper pore and the pad is teeny, which means that it will really hold it in there and be nice and strong for that. Let me show you a 3D view. This is the 3D view, and as you can see right here, uh, the copper is so big, but the pads are tiny, and so that's really going to hold it in here. Which brings us to our fourth tip, shrunken coverlay. You want your coverlay to really overlap the copper because that will hold the copper in there, and it will make it less likely for it to come off as it did in this board. As you can see, there's been a lot of rework around these uh, motor contact, and that's because those pads came off and their connections disconnected, and so covering that big copper pad with the cover lay is a really good idea to really hold those pads in there, especially when you've got like something like a motor connected to it, where the power from the motor really matters a lot because of the torque that's going to try to pull it off. As you can see here, this is what the flex board is supposed to look like with the motors attached. We have perfect solder joints, and the reason that the solder joints did not come out is because of the cover lay and the wide copper pores. We're able to bend it in all sorts of crazy ways and have all of our components on there that it needs. And it's really cool that you're able to directly solder motors onto this flexible PCB and have it work. Now this next tip is also about strength, and it's to have thicker boards. And if you're dealing with something that has to be strong, and as I was saying earlier, motors, and they have to deal with torque, thicker boards are going to help you a lot with that, because the copper is going to be thicker as well, and the board is going to be nice and thick, and you can really notice how when I bend this, it sort of stays, and when I bend this, it, it doesn't really stay at all. And that's why thicker boards will help, especially if you need stronger applications. Which brings us to our sixth tip, heavier copper. You want to have heavier copper, especially for high power applications like motors, because if you are pulling a lot of amps and you need all that current, it's going to generate heat, and so thicker copper will just help you dissipate that heat faster. And if you are going to go with thinner copper and less weight copper, which most flexible PCBs are, like this one, which is really thin and you can do all sorts of things like it. And if you're dealing with high power applications with thin traces, you will want to use a calculator for that. And I've left a link for the calculator in the description below. Which brings us to our seventh bonus tip, stenciled fonts. Stenciled fonts allow you to have these holes in letters, like the hole in the B and the E's and any other letters, like O. And the main reason for this is the way that they put on the cover lay for PCBs that are flexible. 
let me show you an example of what happened when I made a PCB that did not have stenciled fonts. As you can see here, the B holes, the E holes, and pretty much anywhere else there are enclosed holes, it did not do well. So stenciled fonts allow you to have perfect letters like this. As you can see, that B there is just really helping out, and those E's are perfect. And that's why you want those stenciled fonts, which have those lines through the holes, which allow it to connect the cover lay to there so it looks good. Big thank you to PCBWay for providing me with great support to help me try and figure out the problems that I was having. And it's because of them that I was able to figure out these tips that I can now share with all of you. They even reordered new boards for me when the original flex boards didn't work. So another big thank you to PCBWay and now we have a important announcement. I'm going to be demoing and presenting my desktop satellite tracker at the Teardown Conference on June 22nd. So don't miss out and get your tickets now before June 21st so you can see the Flexboard in action. Thanks for watching and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay tuned and get notified when I make more videos because that is the only way that you can be guaranteed to not miss out on any new videos that I make. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.